Earlier this year, there were two feminist conferences, one in Sydney, one in Melbourne. The one in Melbourne, there was huge polarity. You had anti-sex work feminists on the panel. You had sex worker rights activist feminists doing silent protests. Some of the feminists believed that the Melbourne Feminist Conference wasn't a real feminist conference, so they went down the road and held their own. And I just kind of wonder whether the panel, anyone on the panel has got any strategies for resolving infighting. And it's not just, you know, um, exclusive to feminism. We see it in all kinds of activism whereby the goals and the vision seem to be the same. You know, I think, you know, even the, you know, the anti-sex work feminists and the sex worker activist feminists, they've probably got very similar goals in mind in, in terms of equality for women, but very different ways of going about it. And it's kind of like near the twain shall meet. And I just wondered if anyone's got any strategies for trying well, to resolve I was in, that. I was involved with the F conference in Sydney and I heard about the mob in Melbourne. And, I mean, I'm a, you know, pro-sex worker feminist, not one of the other sort. I just think that, you know, I mean, I think that you're always going to have in any radical movement, movements, you're going to have it. Unfortunately, almost every sort of progressive movement often spends far more time shredding their nearest and dearest rather than the other side, which is one of the pities of the sort of whole things like that. The right is much more disciplined. They behave themselves and actually work together, which is one reason that they're much more effective politically in many ways, that they have their factions and fractions. I think that stuff is unfortunate. In Melbourne, they actually had two conferences in the same building. They had yeah, they moved, they moved down the road. A group well, of them just went down the road. Yeah. And they picketed. They even picketed the entrance. They said, oh, this isn't a real feminist conference. Well, Come I mean, you know, I, I, think, I think we need to sort of resolve it. I think, you know, and I suppose I was making cracks about fundamentalists earlier because I think, you know, I, I mean, I, I have difficulty, I must say, assuming somebody's a feminist if they say nobody can consent to be a sex worker. I think that that's actually disrespecting a whole lot of women's choices quite apart from anything else. I just, I but I mean, that, and that shows that I think, you know, we are going to have differences. We are going to fight yeah. them out. But what we need to do is not run away from the idea. And I think, you know, that was, we were saying that earlier, that uh, Sally was saying that conflict is human. But what we have to do is learn how to do it better so that it actually be doesn't become personal. Yeah. And you know, there was a whole lot... There was a, a whole lot of comments in the first one, and we were talking about that. I mean, one of the trouble that women have is that we're actually much better at playing the, the, the woman rather than the ball, if you're going to use one of those things there. We're much better at demolishing each other on personal grounds and not demolishing ideas. And I think that's something that we actually have to learn. Men are better at it than we are. And I think, you know, quite often, it's like women as bullies are actually much more damaging in some cases than men, because what they do is damage you emotionally and undermine your sense of self-confidence, and that actually doesn't show in the same way bruises do, so you don't get any sympathy and you get fucked over anyhow. So I think there's ways, I think there's things that we need to think about as activist women about how we have those debates and stop spitting dummies and actually start thinking about what the differences are and how we work on the things we agree on. Yeah, and Thanks. I can say, in my experience, the simplest way I know how to do that is to own your own emotions. And I'm, is to own, own your own emotions. Like, I, I didn't know anything about what all that conference stuff was, but I have run a lot of events in my past. And that, to me, sounds like a, a bit of a power struggle in terms of, you know, where, where, where right and where right. And it's like, well, maybe everybody's right, but what generally I think is going on is that you've all got a lot of emotional shit going on. And we've all got that all the time. And the moment we can be conscious enough to own that and know that that's our own stuff and not project it and bully it and damage somebody else, that's the first step to actually getting to a place where we can both be aware enough of Are our own selves Are you saying we can't actually something. disagree with each other? Sorry? Are you saying we can't disagree with each other? No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying, by golly, disagree, but don't project your own emotions about what that disagreement is onto the other person. I think it's also a symptom of our movement and the fact that we're not exactly sure about what we're trying to achieve or what we imagine what we want to achieve or how to get there. So in the union movement, if I can use that as an analogy, we've got hundreds of reasons to fight each other mm. and to be divided and we have been for a long period of time. But when we were faced with John Howard and work choices, we put all of that aside and united for the common goal because we knew what we wanted, we knew what we wanted to achieve and all of those differences are important and debates but they can still happen but we're united around a com common enemy and I think um, it's a symptom of us not being clear about where we want to go. I think, sorry, 
Yeah. I think one of the really important things as well is not to make assumptions about who might or might not agree with you. Um, I think that can be really damaging because people assume that that whole load of people over there are on the other side and won't have a bar of what I'm saying and all those people over there are with me without actually ever making any of what you believe clear. And I know it's, it's so hard. It takes so much time. It takes so much thought and energy and slog to work out what you do actually stand for and what you do believe in and get it all down. But once you do, then everyone else can make up their own mind. And you're not getting anybody in under false pretenses and you don't get that state later on down the line where someone goes, oh, I didn't sign up for that. That's not what I'm here for. And you realise that all along there was a fundamental difference in what you, th what you thought you were there for. So I think being really clear on the bottom line about why you're there, what you're doing together and what your intentions are, what your beliefs are, is, is the most important foundation for that. Because from that point on, you can disagree. You can say, no, on that on point five, you are absolutely fucked in the head, I'm leaving, I'm starting my own. But at least you know it's there and it won't come and bite you in the ass later on.